Hey, Gratuitous here from itsgratuitous.com. In this video, I wanna give you a quick review of the M Audio Oxygen Pro MIDI keyboard for 2024. So I purchased this around December, 2021. And what happened for me was I purchased it and I was in the middle of writing my Safe Spots book. Safe Spots is all about drum loops. So if you wanna learn about you know, how to make custom drum loops and I was just really in the zone of writing that book. So I didn't have time to open this and by the time I opened it, I was past my return period. So I was stuck with this MIDI keyboard. And when I first plugged it into FL Studio, it was really buggy. It gave me a really bad experience. The help manual was not very useful from M Audio. So it, you know, it, it was pretty much at the point where I had to figure out how can I get this Oxygen Pro set up? I was reading on the forums. I saw other people struggling with it too. And I've been using FL Studio for quite a few years and I have time. Well, at that time I had time and I was like, I gotta figure this out. So I figured out like what what were the actual problems of the Oxygen Pro? So first of all, it was the transport buttons were intermittent. They were kind of buggy. And the, the problem with that was that the tempo sync was internal. And you have to make sure that the tempo sync is external. So you can just load you know, a, a template through the preset editor, and then you can simply just um, load that into the Oxygen Pro. You hold down preset, and then you can simply just load up your own preset if you want, or you know, you can uh, get my premium template if you want. I'll talk more about that later on. Um, but so tempo sync was set to internal, which made FL Studio buggy, okay? you have If it's set to external, it's good to go. The second thing is that it loads up by default in DAW mode, all right? So I know you can't see that good in the video, but um, you wanna hit this button right here, which is preset mode. So whenever you turn on the Oxygen Pro, make sure it's in preset mode and you're good to go. The third thing that was um, that I found annoying was that the loop button did not switch between song and pattern mode. So I wrote a free MIDI script, you know, just for you guys, if you wanna use the Oxygen Pro and you want this to change between song and pattern mode, that is what the free MIDI script does, all right? So let's just quick recap. So you wanna make sure that it is set to external mode for your tempo sync. You wanna make sure you're in preset mode and that you also want to install my free MIDI script. It's really easy to install once you do it it, you're set up for however long, like, you know, you have the Oxygen Pro on your computer kind of thing. Now let's just talk about the um, performance of, of the Oxygen Pro. So when you're looking for a MIDI keyboard, there is tons of selection out there and the prices are, you know, fluctuate crazy. Like some MIDI keyboards can be like $700. Some MIDI keyboards can be $100. And what's most important to understand is what are you actually purchasing when you purchase a MIDI keyboard? Because when you're brand new, you think that the more expensive one is gonna make you a better beat maker. But what you need to understand is that a MIDI keyboard has no sounds in it. So it doesn't matter if you purchase a $99 keyboard or like a $9,000 keyboard um, or you know, MIDI keyboard. It has no sounds in it. So you're gonna get the same experience, you know, plus or minus a little bit kind of thing. So what I'm trying to say is I think the Oxygen Pro still to date is priced at a really nice sweet spot. You can see it has so many sliders, so many knobs. You also have your different banks, right? So each time you go to a different bank, that's another set of knobs, another set of sliders. My biggest thing that I do not like about the Oxygen Pro is that these are absolute encoders. And so what that means is there is a fixed end and there's a fixed beginning. So which means that when we switch between banks, the knob is, let's say it's here, but then we go to the next bank and the parameter is expecting the knob to be here. Built into these MIDI keyboards is what we call soft takeover. And it works, but it's annoying. And in other words, if you are, you know, let's say getting hands on mixing with your knobs, and then now you wanna switch the bank, you have to get those knobs up to the right point and then they start working. So it really messes work with the workflow. So if M Audio is watching this video, my highest recommendation is to keep the Oxygen Pro like exactly as is, but have endless encoders. And that would allow us as end users to switch banks and immediately start exactly where we, um, you know, exactly where that knob should be so that we can actually switch banks and get hands on mixing and give, you know, give us an amazing workflow. And my dream MIDI keyboard really would be to have motorized faders with endless encoders, but that would be, you know, pretty expensive. 
So let's just do a quick breakdown of each section. So the keys, um, finding semi-weighted keys. And so what are semi-weighted keys? So when you purchase a really cheap MIDI keyboard, let's say $99, you're gonna get kind of like synth keys. And like the keys are really, 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 really cheap feeling. Um, and if you play the, like, you know, on a real piano, when you go to like a cheap piano, like synth keys kind of thing, it's just, I just don't enjoy that. So Oxygen Pro 49 does have semi-weighted keys. Now, are they amazing? Are they good? I wouldn't say like they're 10 out of 10, but I would say they are semi-weighted and they give definitely a better feeling than cheap synth keys, but they're not like amazing semi-weighted keys. Um, but you have to understand it. It is just a MIDI keyboard. It doesn't matter if you're purchasing it like, like a $700 MIDI keyboard or like a 99. These things are typically just plastic. Like they're just cheap little keyboards for us to control our music program. So I'm just, you know, what I'm trying to get across to you is the price point. It's just, a, I think, at a really sweet spot. You get all your, you know, semi-weighted keys, you get your drum pads, you get your sliders, your knobs, you get your banks. You're not locked into any software. So, you know, for example, like Native Instruments and, and Arturia, like they're really pushing like their portal software in order to use their other stuff. And I'll just stick to, let's say, Native Instruments for a second. So I actually did a review on the Native Instruments A49 and it's actually priced more affordable than the Oxygen Pro. And it's a really nice MIDI keyboard, but what happens is you have to install the native instruments like Portal software to unlock more things on that MIDI keyboard. And, and I don't think that's cool. I don't want the hardware to rely on that software, if that makes sense. So the Oxygen Pro does have uh, it's preset editor, but you don't have to use it. And if you do use it, you're able to customize the MIDI keyboard. You send the preset into the Oxygen Pro, and then you do not need that. Like, you can actually uninstall that software. You don't need it on your computer because it stores it into the MIDI keyboard. And like, they don't lock you into having to have their software. And that's just like a thing I've been noticing in recent years with, you know, um, plugins and hardware that companies are really wanting to get into your computer. And then a lot of times you open up that portal software and it's essentially just like a storefront. You know, it's like they're, they have all of their products that they're, they're trying to sell you in addition to keeping you updated, if that makes sense. So the keys, you know, for the price, I like them, right? We have our tons of drum pads. Again, I don't use my drum pads as I'm making beats. I um, have created this template for a really cool FL Studio workflow. And I'll share that a little bit later in the video where we can navigate FL Studio. I can open up plugins, I can change presets, I can flip the state of plugins. So, you know, once you become a better producer, A and B comparison is really important. You know, when you're dealing with compression and EQ, you wanna flip between two states. We can do that right off of our drum pads. Now, closing out, a couple things I wanna say before I finish off is, Again, I purchased this near the end of 2021. And then, um, you know, now it is May 11th, 2024. And I've had a really, really good experience with this MIDI keyboard. Um, one thing I do want to say is there was a time where a couple of these sliders would start changing numbers randomly, right? And I saw some reports online of other people also experiencing this, but it has gone away. And that was concerning. I didn't like that. But Everything so far has been really, really good. Like, you know, if I if I move my sliders or anything, nothing's changing uh, numbers, you know? And so what I'm saying is like, it was starting to change by itself. And that wasn't like, that was just kind of a sign of things are starting to fail, but it has like recovered. <laughs> and right now it's rock solid with this template. And I've, I've really, I've really enjoyed my Oxygen Pro experience. Now, one thing I promised, uh, you know, everyone on my newsletter is I will be purchasing a new Oxygen Pro to ensure that M Audio hasn't changed anything because a lot of times companies, they kind of change a model sometimes without announcing like it's a generation two or anything. And so I will purchase a new Oxygen Pro for you guys and I will do an in-depth review um, and my experience about, you know, unboxing it plugging it in, installing it, because, you know, if you guys are watching my FL Studio courses inside of my platform, I want you to get the experience I get with FL Studio. There's a lot of like reading, a lot of learning you have to do, and I've gone through all that, and I want to speed you up. So if you get the Oxygen Pro, as well as if you have my FL Studio template, 
and you're part of the platform, you can learn super, super good because this is my actual workflow. Now, let me just quickly load up FL Studio and I'll give you a quick sneak peek or not really a sneak peek, but just kind of a quick overview of the drum pad uh, workflow in FL Studio. Okay, so the first thing I just want to quickly share is I have a help area for this Oxygen Pro. I've been working on this Oxygen Pro template for a couple years now and you know I've got a lot of questions over time and I just created a dedicated help area for you. So visit itsgratuitous.com, go to the help area and here is the help area for the Oxygen Pro and here's a whole bunch of help articles for you, okay? And this is all about the M Audio Oxygen Pro template for FL Studio by me, Gratuitous. And again, you can learn more about it. And so um, this is the package that you would actually receive. You get uh, MIDI scripts. So this comes with a free MIDI script, which is available to you. And, and that one fixes the transport buttons. It also comes with a premium MIDI script if you want this drum pad workflow, which I'll explain. It also comes with two different versions of the templates. Version one is just the basic experience of a MIDI keyboard in FL Studio. For example, if you actually like using your drum pads for the kicks, the claps, all that stuff, you just use version one. If you wanna follow my drum pad workflow in FL Studio, then you're gonna be using the uh, what I call the, um, the latest version, and this is the drum pad layout, okay? So if you want the drum pad layout, you have to use uh, version three, Okay, or the latest version, you have to use both MIDI scripts. The free one is just for the transport buttons. The premium one is to get this drum pad experience. And again, we uh, have to import that with the preset editor and stuff. And so in FL Studio, you can see I set it up just like this. We have the Oxygen Pro, the premium goes here. If you don't want the drum pad workflow, you just wanna have a basic MIDI keyboard, then you're just gonna set it up just like this, okay? But I do want to share just quickly how it works. And then here is the MIDI in three. So this one always needs to be on because it fixes the transport buttons. So as you can see up top here, we hit like the, the loop button, it changes between song and pattern mode. You can hit play, uh, pause, stop, record, all that stuff, okay? All right, so let me just give you a quick demonstration. So here I am in the channel rack and I can change that with my arrows. So I'm in channel rack or I'm in the mixer, right? Or I can go to the browser. So let's go to the channel rack. And as you can see, I can open up the channel sampler. I can go through the different windows. I can close that, go to the Nexus, let's say. I can open up Nexus. You can see I can kind of go to my different presets and that's all off of the drum pads. If I hold it down, you can go faster, all right? We can go to our different categories. Let's say we want to go to like, let's say, um, let's go strings. Okay, so I'll go strings, go to the categories, and then I can select the preset. What's really awesome about this is my hands are up here, right? And I can come over here to the slider and I can turn up and down the volume you see up here. So this is just a part of the workflow that once you're starting to make beats, if a, if an instrument is too quiet, you know, you're, you are gonna struggle to make a catchy melody. So you wanna make sure that the, that the volume is at a sweet spot and you can do it just right here, right off your hand. Right, go to a different sound. Let's say we want to go to a piano now or something, right? So I load, oh, one sec. I'm gonna go down to the, let's say a piano. Okay, all right, so again, I'm gonna close that. Let's say we are in the mixer. You can see I can kind of go to the mixer. I'm gonna load up a, a, a plugin here. You know, I can get my hands on mixing. So, you know, forward, back, all that kind of stuff. I can change my mixer presets. And again, I just wanna quickly share um, a powerful thing that I now have here for you in version three is I have the global link file. So if you are new to FL Studio, when we set up FL Studio, um, you can right click and you can go link to controller. This is what's called a project link and it's only for this project. Or you can set up a global link if you wanna set up the plugin a certain way for old plugins and new plugins. So in other words, whenever you open up this plugin, you always want this knob to be set up and you can see it's blue, okay? And so you get my actual global link file right here and I share how to install it like in the package here. And this gives you the actual fab filter experience, right? You can see I can turn up all my different stuff. I can also save the state. So for example, if I want everything to go down, you know, I can flip between two different states and as a mixer and master, you know, if you mix and master, A and B comparison is so important, right? And you can quickly do that off of your drum pads. All right, so that is it for my quick review of the uh, M Audio Oxygen Pro. Um, like I said, I'm really, really happy with this Oxygen Pro. For the price, it is jam-packed. 
Um, also, you have like my support here for this like kind of cool drum pad workflow. And if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out if you're unsure, you know, because it is expensive. It's not like it's cheap, you know, if you're getting into music production, you're trying to learn this stuff. But what I'm trying to say is compared to its competitors, I really think this is at a sweet spot. You get the semi-weighted keys. Everything is jam packed in regards to, you know, you have your sliders, your knobs, your drum pads. You have four different banks, which again, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight, that's 16, that's 24, that's 32 knobs you have, right? And then the same thing with this, with the sliders. Yes, you have your pitch and your, your mod wheel. I personally never use that stuff. And um, sometimes in FL Studio, the pitch and mod wheel can be buggy. And so I actually have an article about how to fix the pitch and mod wheel. And I'll make sure to add that into my help articles here because some of you I do know like to use um, your, you know, you, you like you like your uh, pitch and mod wheel. I personally never use that. I just play my melodies. And then if I'm going to customize stuff, a lot of times I'll do that with my mouse through automation and stuff, okay? All right, so that is my quick review of the Oxygen Pro. I definitely recommend it to students of my platform. And if you want to learn FL Studio, you guys can visit me at itsgratuitous.com. I have over 35 beat making courses, and these do relate no matter what DAW for the most part you use. Some courses are specific to FL Studio, but if you are wanting to learn how to make beats, get up and running and learn really powerful workflow as a beat maker, just visit me over at itsgratuitous.com forward slash courses. You can see all the courses. You can see the pricing. If you have questions, just email, uh, send me an email at hi at itsgratuitous.com. I hope you guys enjoy the Oxygen Pro if you get it. My recommendation to you is the 49 key. I find that it's nicely priced and it doesn't take up tons of room, but I know a lot of you do like the 61. But what makes this special is that semi-weighted keys are really hard to find in a 49 key model. And so that's like what I always look for. 49 key semi-weighted because a lot of times semi-weighted does come in the 61 key models of most MIDI keyboards, um, but since it's in a 49 key, because I like a 49 key, and you know, I actually play a real piano all the time, and yes, I do like how, you know, how big a real piano is, but when we're, when we're actually making beats, you have to understand that a lot of times, like, you know, you make your first melody, and then a lot of times you're going to load up another virtual instrument, you're just going to hit your octave button or whatever, you know, you're going to go up and down. And a lot of times you start playing with one hand. So it's not really like you need a huge MIDI keyboard. And I've been making beats for many, many years now. I've always used a 49 key and that's what I personally like. All right. So hope you guys enjoy. Visit itsgratuitous.com and I'll talk to you in another video.